Hi, and welcome back to Gavin Sonics B. Well, you probably thought that I'd probably died or something, um, but no, I'm still alive. Um, I just haven't had any time to do any work on the aircraft. Um, we've been very busy with um, customers over the summer, and uh, I just haven't had the time to, uh, to get into the workshop and do anything uh, constructive. I have spent a lot of time poring over uh, drawings and looking at things in the future and making my mind up about a few things, but actual construction work, uh, pretty much nothing at all. Um, so this is a little update to, uh, to show you where I am at the moment. Um, I'll start off with a few updates from uh, Sonics. Um, you may remember a few videos back um, I was fitting the uh, flap control arm in the uh, I'll turn it. Yeah. I was fitting the flap actuator into the front of the tail cone and uh, if you can remember I did mention that it was at an odd angle and I thought maybe it should have been level with the slot and uh, I think I said I was going to contact Sonics and uh, ask them about it well I never actually did that um, I never got round to doing that but all of a sudden I had an email from Sonics saying they've uh, discovered there's a an error in the uh, design and uh, in fact the flap um, control arm should be level what's happened is that uh, when they changed the flap actuator itself which is this bit they changed it for one that had a potentiometer built into it and it's actually longer than the original and hence it won't retract far enough so, uh, to cure the problem, they have provided two new brackets and a new location for those brackets to go. So the original brackets were under here on the right hand side of the tail cone at the front. And now these new brackets have got to go around in here um, to allow the arm to come back upright. Which means I've got to take the old ones off, drill them out, um, drill some new holes in a place that's not particularly easy to get to and fit these ones. But uh, it's no more than an hour's work, so that's not a problem um, and secondly uh, let me look at my list oh yes I think on the last uh, video or the video before I was saying to you that uh, the top let me just change the camera around but the only bit I'd had real problems actually making were the top longer ones on the Ford fuselage because really to do it properly they've got to be milled. Well somebody either watched my video or one of the others <laughs> or several other builders have uh, complained and uh, I got a uh, email uh, a few weeks ago saying that from now onwards the kit is going to come with ready machined top longer ons for the uh, Ford fuselage, which is great news because uh, it actually was, um, well, would have been impossible for me to do here. Um, and uh, luckily, I had a friend who uh, could sort it out for me. And thirdly on my list, oh yes, the fuel tank straps. Luckily, I haven't got that far yet, but um, the fuel tank straps, which go across from here to the other side and here to the other side, have been causing a bit of an issue with um, the 
fuel tank. And uh, what they've discovered is that uh, the fuel tank, uh, when it's full of fuel, over a period of time, expands. And uh, that then causes the straps to bite into it and distort the tank, which is obviously not a, a good thing. Um, so they've redesigned the straps now so that they are adjustable effectively. Um, uh, they're broken in the middle with a, uh, an adjuster bolt to, uh, to adjust them with. And so apparently they're shipping those out, um, commencing this week, I think, um, to everybody who's um, previously ordered the kit. Um, so I'm waiting for those to come. The, there is a new procedure for fitting your tank which means you have to start thinking about it about eight weeks in advance. The reason for this is you need to pre-expand um, uh, your tank, for want of a better um, description. So uh, what you have to do is cut the holes in it um, uh, and then uh, blank off those holes and then put some fuel in it and leave it for about six weeks to expand and then empty the fuel out of it and then fit it and so you've really got to think about it a long way in advance and that means really for my purposes i want to get to that stage in the not too distant future so i'm going to pre-expand my tank um, so i've got it out it's over there um, ready to uh, start hacking it about and uh, and then filling it up with some fuel and putting it away somewhere to fester for a while. Um, obviously having a tank partially filled with fuel in the house isn't probably a good idea so I think I'll put it in the garage um, because if the garage burns down that's a long way away from the house and I don't really care. Um, <laughs> the insurance will cover it. Um, what I don't want to do is the house to burn down whilst I'm in it. <laughs> uh, so that's the, uh, the little updates we've had from Sonics. And uh, what's next on my list? Yes, so the last time on the last video, I was looking at the... Uh, yeah, what do you call them? The spa tunnel. That's it. The spa tunnel. And uh, I was having a little look at putting the bits together and uh, umming and ahhing about it. Well, it got progressively more complicated as I started to look at which pieces I could actually drill holes in, countersink, maybe put some uh, um, rivets in. Uh, I started to think, well, I... I it's not obvious. There's no obvious build um, order for the Ford fuselage. It's quite complicated. There's a lot of bits and it wasn't 100% uh, obvious to me where all the bits went. So you may have spotted to my right over here that uh, I have actually uh, got all the pieces out and have uh, temporarily clicoed them together whilst it's separate from the tail cone and this is really just to get an idea of where everything goes get an idea of which bits I can actually drill out and um, copper clico together potentially rivet together um, and it has highlighted a couple of little issues. Um, so I'll give you a quick look at where we are. So I've got the forward cross tie fitted between the two sides. We'll go super wide for this. And there's the spar tunnel in place. This is looking from the front or the firewall backwards basically and then behind that we've got the seat pan and I've just temporarily put the seat back in place just to uh, complete the picture 
Um, and so uh, it's all braced at the top at 40 inches just to uh, uh, keep it all together whilst it's not connected to the tail cone. So what I'll do now is I will stop the video, take the seat pan out and then we'll have a look at the bits that are underneath. So now I'm standing where the seat back was looking forwards and we've got the seat formers which there are four of two brackets at the ends to support the seat as well and then we've got the spar tunnel rear assembly and in front of that the uh, spar tunnel forward angle as well so when I put all this together um, it looked quite obvious to me that uh, <laughs> the way the bits should go together but I was wrong because if I come around this side and get in underneath here we can have a bit of a better look the seat formers are connected to some angles aluminium angles they're pre-made pre-drilled pre-machined and the former the this the seat former has to go on the inside of the bracket which has uh, quite a substantial radius uh, it's like a uh, you know a, a right angle bracket an l bracket um, and uh, it's got a big radius and as you can see when the former is clicoed into place the radius holds the former away from the interior surface and it does it the same on all four of them and not only that but at the back here are these two parts which have to go on a similar type of bracket and as you can probably see they're not sitting down either and it's basically because the brackets are slightly too or the, the um, formers are slightly too long um, and go round the radius on the inside of the brackets um, so your way I oh, I've got to get out of here now oh. there we go um, in my usual way, I emailed uh, technical at Sonics and I thought of f four different things that I could do. Um, I could try and just rivet them as they are and hope they pull flat. I could uh, file away the inside of the bracket to extend the flat part, I could trim the length of the formers so that they are sitting on the flat bit of the inside of the bracket and not the curvy bit. And there was one other which escapes me at the moment. Uh, oh yes, that was it. Bend the former to the shape of the uh, radius at the end um, so that it sat down flat. So I sent an email to Technical with these four options saying that my preferred one was to shorten the, uh, the former. Bearing in mind that these are completely um, Sonics made parts, um, all pre-drilled, um, pre-machined, pre-bent. Um, so I can't really move the holes, um, which would have been another option. Um, and uh, got a very quick reply saying, yes, shorten the formers. <laughs> so I will. <laughs> so that will sort that out. Um, but uh, now that I've actually got it all um, Clico together, it makes much, much, much more sense. And... Um, 
one of the things you've got to keep in mind is that um, the spar tunnel, uh, with the spar tunnel, um, you can uh, drill it, uh, you can um, countersink the various parts, you can dimple the um, sheet on the inside, but you cannot rivet any of it. Um, because uh, according to the uh, drawings, um, you can only rivet it once you have completed the wing rigging. And of course, to get to that stage, you've got to have basically built the forward fuselage and have it in a place where you can actually put the wings on. Um, so I've now, I'm now negotiating for space at our local airport to, uh, in the hangar to try and get everything moved over there so that I can do this. Um, with the drawings, it's worth bearing in mind that to get a really good picture of, let me just move everything out of the way. To get a really good picture of how to assemble the Ford fuselage, you need to look at many drawings. And uh, the tendency is to follow the uh, chart. So, so at the moment, um, I've been working on this one. F17 and F16 with a view to going to F11 but to be quite honest before you really start on F11 at all and really when you're thinking about these two you need to look at the following you need to look at F11 which is the general construction for the forward fuselage you need to look at F09 because uh, that's got all the details of the bottom and uh, how that all fits together and details further on about uh, the back end um, and then you also really and, and read what's written in the uh, general uh, construction order and then F08 as well um, because that has some information about uh, the location of things um, and how it's generally going to fit together which you really need to know before you start and then F05 um, now this one you need to just well you've obviously decided whether you're a tricycle gear person or a tail dragger I'm a tail dragger so I've red X'd through everything that I don't need to take any notice of <laughs> just so I don't panic and uh, again need to read all the notes on this bit about where you, because basically you've got to drill some extra holes in uh, in the um, tunnel and forward tunnel angle uh, that needs to be done and there are also some extra holes for these brackets here which need to be drilled um, and positioned for a tail dragger and then O2 as well because that has actually got the information of what you do during rigging the wings and has the final information on uh, basically as assembling everything together and there's a huge um, construction order there and to be quite honest until you've read all those drawings uh, you really haven't got a full picture of what you're doing and uh, now that I have read them I'm a happy bunny 
and uh, I think I've got a good handle on what I need to do what I can actually assemble what I can't what I can rivet what I can't um, so now what I'm going to do next is strip this all apart again and start to build it up in little sub assemblies the pieces that I know I can put together um, and uh, then we'll look at um, attaching the sides onto the tail cone um, getting the uh, floor lined up drilled onto the bottom longer ons um, etc um, so that I can then start to put it together in some kind of order remembering that you've got to be able to take out the uh, or take it apart enough to be able to get the spar tunnel out because that's not going to get um, riveted um, until right at the very end which uh, well could be a few months away or it could be a few years away the way I'm going at the moment anyway I am I'm hopeful that I can make some better progress now that things are calming down after the summer um, and I haven't got so much uh, cleaning washing ironing pool maintenance um, customers making odd requests um, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, being able to report that I've actually done something useful and uh, made a bit so I'll leave that thought with you and uh, I hope you're all having a good summer um, the weather here has been very very strange the wind has been pretty much continuously blowing in the opposite direction that it normally does in uh, in the summer normally we have a southwesterly breeze but this year it's been from the northeast um, pretty much continuously very very strange the temperature here is well below what we would normally expect should be in the late 30s um, last year it was over 40 uh, this year middle 20s um, sometimes it's dropped down to uh, sort of 18 degrees um, so uh, not all the customers have been very happy about the weather <laughs> but there's nothing i can do about that um so anyway i'll leave it there and i'll see you all uh, again soon i hope see you later <laughs>